Hello, and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett, and on this channel, we cover all things Gen Chem related. On this video, I'll be discussing phase diagrams. Hello, and welcome back to Gen Chem with Dr. J. I'm Dr. Janita Pritchett, and on this channel, we cover all things Gen Chem related. On this video, I'll be discussing phase diagrams, helping you to understand how they are laid out and some information we can gain from them. Let's get started. You may see phase diagrams um, periodically throughout your time in chemistry, so it's important to understand how they are set up and what information we can pull from them. So phase diagrams basically describe um, the physical state or the various um, uh, events that could be occurring at a particular temperature and pressure combination. Now, the regions that you're going to see represented here all represent the physical states that we're dealing with. And when I'm saying regions, all of these phase diagrams, you're going to see this kind of like Y um, uh, shape format that exists, all right, where you have this big Y. And these regions that are present are always going to represent the phase matter, phases of matter. So there will always be solid, liquid, and gas, or solid, liquid, and gas, OK? Um, and then the lines themselves, those actual lines that are there between the regions represent the actual phase change. So the line between solid to liquid represent the melting part or the freezing point. Um, going from liquid to gas would represent the vapor, evapor, evaporate, evaporation or the condensation, all right? Um, in the center, there's also what's called the triple point, which tells us the um, temperature and pressure condition in which all physical states um, can exist. And then there's also the critical point, which is I've pointed to on a better image, but it's um, above that point, you're going to have those supercritical fluids that can exist. And so this is what a traditional phase diagram would look like for you here. Again, notice that Y that I mentioned. Each of the regions represents solids, liquids, gases, and you have your pressure and temperature on their respective axes. Axes, excuse me. Um, now each of the lines would represent different phase transition. So the line between gas and liquid represents the evaporation or the condensation process. The line between solid to liquid represents your fusion curve um, or your melting and freezing um, transitions. And then the line between solids and gases represent the sublimation or deposition process. Uh, at the end of that, that uh, line between liquid and gas, that is your critical point. So remember, above that point, that's where you have supercritical fluid uh, materials that can exist. We also have our triple point, which is the point right in the center of that Y that all three phases can simultaneously exist. And then we can make some predictions about what the boiling point and melting point would be because that is the temperature um, in which the vapor pressure is equivalent to the external pressure outside. So a lot of information we can get from here. Now, what you'll see, and I'm going to click through these relatively quickly, just so you can see how all of them look pretty much the same, where um, when we're dealing with this phase diagram, we have that solid liquid gas region and a variety of pressure and temperature combinations that exist. All right, again, here with the phase diagram of water, we can see ice, water, steam, or solid, liquid, gas, the triple point, the critical point, all those, those things. Again, water again. And then even just a, an expanded version of what's happening in the ice realm. Ice can do some freaky little things, but um, we won't really delve into those so much. You can see with carbon dioxide, same format, solid, liquid, gas, triple point, critical point. So those labelings will hold consistent regardless of the substance that you're dealing with. All right, again, carbon dioxide, solid, liquid, gas. Um, iodine, solid, liquid, gas. Again, notice how that the similarities amongst these things. All right, so how would we use this? Well, basically, you may be given a phase diagram of some unknown substance and asked to either A, label the different regions, so we know solid, liquid, gas, and then label all the curves, um, or you could be told what substance it is and then given combinations of pressure and temperature and asked to predict what phase would it be. And so um, we, can, we can try that here. So if we're dealing with 20 degrees um, and 72.9 atmospheres, well, 20 degrees would fall somewhere between here and here. And 72.9 would get us somewhere here. So we would be dealing with a liquid in that case. 
If we're dealing with negative 56.7 and 5.1, well, negative 56.7 is here. 5.1 puts right on the triple point. So we would say the triple point. And then at 10 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere, well, that would put us in our gas. At negative 78.5 and one atmosphere, we're landing right on that line. And so that would be our sublimation point or our deposition point. Sorry about the phone going off. Okay, that transition. And so either phase could be there. And then last but not least, if we're dealing with 50 degrees and 80 degrees, well, 50 degrees is somewhere out here, 80 degrees is somewhere up here. So now we're outside of that critical point. And so that's when we know we're dealing with super critical fluids. Okay, so very straightforward when it comes to our phase diagrams. I hope this information helped you guys understand phase diagrams, how to read them, and how to extrapolate information from them. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know any other videos you'd like to see. And I'll see you guys in future videos. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.